Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday. Is Holy Week really holy? Almost all Christians today keep Sunday as their holy day because Jesus' resurrection is Sunday. Is this really biblical? The Sunday keepers have the mark of the beast today. It's not made for the Sabbath, but Sabbath for the man. That the man is the more important issue, not the day, but the man. Are you following what I'm saying to you? He is the new covenant. It's all about him. It's not about keeping this rule or that rule or keeping that day or that day. It's about Jesus. Now, Jesus never said a word about keeping the Sabbath that we can read in the New Testament. And the Sabbath was made so that we can rest. It's the time, yes, to worship God, but it doesn't mean it's, it's the day for going to church. Thank you, dear friends, for supporting this ministry. Kindly like and share this present truth to all. Here are the 10 myths about the Sabbath. Number one, myth number one. There is no direct command in Genesis to keep the Sabbath. It's not for Adam and Eve. Many believe that there are strong theological reasons why God did not give a direct command to Adam and Eve to keep the Shabbat on the seventh day of creation. But before we answer that, it is vital to understand first these important facts. Fact number one, we remember that when God rested, there was no sin and there was no juice. Fact number two, in the first six days and the seventh, focuses only on what God worked on. The word God appears 31 times in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. Verse 2 and 3 underlines 10 times that it was God who works his days and sees and rested on the seventh. Genesis 2 verse 3, God rested and then sanctified the Shabbat. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it, he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. Carefully take note of the world because God rested and then sanctified. The Sabbath, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore, notice the word, therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath and hallowed it, gave it to our first parents. Here is the sequence of events. Sequence one, God worked the first six days. Sequence number two, God rested the seventh day. Sequence three, when the seventh day ended, God blessed and sanctified it. Sequence number four. After God had worked six and six on the seventh, the week was complete. God then gave the week to Adam and Eve and their descendants. Creation week is what we refer to as God's week because God, not man, worked six and rested on the Sabbath. Question, why is there no direct command? for Adam and Eve to keep the Sabbath in the Garden of Eden? We are now ready to answer that question. Point number one, Adam and Eve could not cease from work on the seventh day because they had not worked the first six. How could they cease from work if they had not worked six? Men came into the picture. Man came into the picture only on the sixth day. They haven't worked six, so how can they rest? Point number two, God had to make the Sabbath before He could give it to man. Mark 2.27 says, The Sabbath was made for man. John chapter 1 verse 3, All things were made through Him. This verse tells us explicitly that Jesus was the Creator and Jesus made all things. The word made is identical to the one in Mark 2.27, The Sabbath was made for man. Point number three, Jesus could have told Adam and Eve to keep the Sabbath of creation week holy because he did not make it holy until he had finished resting the entire seventh day. Point number four, it is absurd to believe that Jesus would bless the Sabbath and set it apart as for himself. Point number five, Adam and Eve could not follow God's example of Sabbath observance until he had first given the example. Per Point number six, the fourth commandment applies to Adam and Eve, beginning with the second Sabbath of human history. Question friends, is Holy Week really holy? What makes a day holy? Answer, the Sabbath day is holy because God rested on it. Sunday is not holy, 
Thursday is not holy and Friday because God did not rest on it, sanctified and blessed. You would have to rewrite history for them to be holy. Only God can make a day holy. And when God bless something, it is blessed forever. Holy Week, respectfully I say, is just based on human traditions of Rome. The Sunday keepers have the mark of the beast now. Myth number two, the Sabbath was made for the Jews. Here are some solid reason why the Sabbath was not only made for the Jews. Reason number one, Adam and Eve were not Jewish. God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it before sin entered. Sanctified means to be set apart for holy use. Adam and Eve are the only human beings at creation for whom the Sabbath was set apart, where Adam and Eve were not Jews. Mark 2.27 was a great opportunity for Jesus to clear up the confusion. He made clear statement that the Sabbath was made for man. The Greek word for man there is anthropos, where we get anthropology, the study of man. Reason number three, the other nine commandments are not just for the Jews. God wrote the Ten Commandments in stone. The, the commandment, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, and thou shalt not commit adultery. Do the other nine only apply to the Jews? The Sabbath commandment is also for stranger, foreigners, meaning Gentile, is to rest on the Sabbath. Read the evidence in the commandment itself. Exodus 20 verse 10, strangers are another word for non-Jews or Gentiles. Let us read Isaiah 56 verse 6, also the sons of the stranger, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant, prophet Isaiah said, Gentiles should keep the Sabbath, for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people, thus the Sabbath is for Gentiles and all people, not just for Jews, in the heavens and the new earth. All flesh will keep the Sabbath in the new earth. From one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before the Lord, the prophet Isaiah said. Myth number three, Sunday keepers have the mark of the beast now. Seventh-day Adventists do not believe that Sunday keepers have the mark of the beast now. Our official belief is no one has yet received the mark of the beast. The testing time has not yet come. There are true Christians in every church, not exempting the Roman Catholic communion. None are condemned until they had had the light and seen the obligation of the fourth commandment. But when the decree shall go forth enforcing the counterfeit Sabbath by USA, the land beast, Revelation 13 verse 11, and the loud cry of the third angel shall warn men against the worship of the beast and his image. The line will be clearly drawn between the false and the true. Then those who still continue in transgression will receive the mark of the beast. Myth number four, Jesus broke the Sabbath, John 5 verse 18. The Jews were accusing Jesus of breaking the Sabbath when he just healed a paralytic the Old Testament scripture says, There is no law against act of healing on the Sabbath or telling a man to pick up his bed and walk home. They were added by rabbinical rules, added by scholars, and handed down via traditions. Jesus did not break the Sabbath law by healing on the day. His work of healing on the Sabbath was lawful. Then he said to them, What a man is there among you who has one sheep? And if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and live out? Verse 12, Of how much more value then is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. The Pharisees also accused Jesus as a glutton, a drunkard. Matthew 11 verse 19. Just like what modern churches are teaching today, that Jesus broke the Sabbath, they are making Jesus a sinner because sin is the transgression of the law. And if Jesus would have broken the Sabbath, he would be a sinner and he would need a redeemer. The Seventh-day Adventist Church do not teach that Jesus broke the Sabbath. He fulfilled the law of God. Myth number five, the Sabbath is part of the old Jewish covenant. Most Christians today believe that the Ten Commandments are a part of the old Jewish covenant and therefore they do not apply to Christians. 
here is where they based it on Deuteronomy 4, 13 to 14. So he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, the Ten Commandments. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone, Exodus 21 to 2. And God spoke all these words to Israel, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. The problem is that they draw wrong conclusions from these verses. Exodus 20 verse 1 and 2 shows God gave all the Ten Commandments, not only to Israel. So the question is, are all Ten Commandments only for Israel? Is it proper for Christians to have other gods, worship idols, to steal, dishonor their parents, kill, commit, adultery, bear false witness, and covet? Of course not. The reason why God gave the Ten Commandments to Israel is because they were His chosen people at that time. When He gave the law to them, but nowhere does the scripture says it is exclusively for them. In the same way, Jesus promised His 12 apostles that He is going to prepare a place for them. John 14 verse 3 says, I go to re prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Question, is the promise in John 14 1 to 3 only for the apostles? Absolutely not. In the same way, the Sabbath is not only for the Jews and the Ten Commandments is not only for Israel. Myth number six, the Sabbath is an exclusive sign between Israel and God. Exodus 31 verse 13 and verse 16 and 17, Speak also to the children of Israel, surely my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout generation. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. The Bible does say that the Sabbath was a sign for Israel, but it was not an exclusive sign for Israel. Myth number seven, the Sabbath is nailed to the cross. Colossians 2 verse 14 says, Blotting out the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect an holy day, or the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. The Sabbath commandment is not a shadow of things to come. The Sabbath commandment it's not a shadow that points to Christ, but rather it points us back to creation. Majority of the Christian world today believes that the Ten Commandments, and that includes the Fourth Commandment, is nailed to the cross. Blotting out the handwriting or ordinances, the Ten Commandments is not handwritten, it is fingerwritten, as stated in Exodus 31 verse 18. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 refers to the law of Moses written in a book which was contrary, meaning against us. The law of Moses is nailed to the cross because type meant anti-type. What are the handwriting of ordinances? There are the ceremonial laws of Moses. Malachi chapter 4 verse 4. Myth number 8. We are not under the law but under grace. Romans 6 verse 14. Paul says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What does that mean? Let's read verse 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Paul makes a clear statement. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law? Meaning, we are not under the penalty of sin. Just because we are under grace, doesn't give us the freedom and license to break the commandments of God. Because the grace of the cross is not cheap. Myth number nine, we keep the Lord's day, which is Sunday. The prophet Isaiah makes it clear what day is the Lord's day. Isaiah 58 verse 13, if you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight, and the Lord's holy day honorable. There is no hint in the Bible that Sunday is the Lord's day, but rather the Bible calls Sunday the first day of the week. Luke 24, myth number 10. We keep Sunday in honor of the resurrection. According to Paul in Romans chapter 6, 
Christ has already given us a sign for the resurrection. It is baptism, not Sunday. Therefore, we were buried in Him through baptism into death. And as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. The Sabbath day was kept holy in Antioch, Acts 13, 42-44. It was kept holy in Philippi, Acts 16, verse 13. It was kept holy in Thessalonica, Acts 17, verse 2 and 4. It was kept holy in Corinth, Acts 18, verse 4. So you can see that early Christians kept the Sabbath holy. Jesus didn't change the Sabbath. None of the apostles changed it. The Sabbath is our quality time. Holy time with the Holy God. Dear friends, God invites us to keep His commandments because of love. John 14 verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Do you love Jesus, friends? If yes, kindly type in the comment section, My Jesus, I love thee. If this video has been helpful, friends, kindly like and share and continue to preach truth in Bible prophecy.